I have visited fur farms across Canada from coast to coast. They feel barren and quiet and often they are surrounded by forest, which I find particularly cruel. Here are these animals. At least they have access to the breeze and the sounds of nature, but they're looking out from their cages. They're even looking out at wild animals. Sometimes foxes are looking out at wild foxes passing by. This farm in particular was very overgrown. There was a lot of wildness to it. These places are out of view, out of sight. We don't know that they're there for the most part. They're surrounded by a forest. Their lives are invisible to us. Animals on fur farms lead a very lonely existence. They are usually separated one from the other, unless it's breeding season. They are alone in cages and you see their bodies in these repetitive motions of, of stress and of attempting to escape and knowing that they can't. The circling, the pacing, they use exact movements because they have done it probably hundreds of thousands of times. Something that's really haunting about fur farms as well are the sounds. A lot of people don't know that foxes have this mournful cry. And when we are walking through the cages and photographing and filming, they let out these mournful cries. Sometimes they're fearful, plaintive, and it's haunting, it's almost like the sound of a child. When I arrived at that fur farm for the first time, Rose the red fox was the first animal who we saw, and her eyes were very lively and she was very much there, she was very much present, but it's like her body had given up the ghost already. She watched us, but her chin stayed on the bottom of the cage and she lay there unmoving. It was clear that she had chewed off most of her tail and she was missing one of her legs as well. There was nothing more than a stump there. We don't know what happened to that leg. Perhaps she had been wild caught in a trap and lost her leg that way, or perhaps she had chewed off her leg as well. Rose was a breeding fox, so she had likely been bred many times to produce young who would be then slaughtered for the fashion industry. Ultimately, Rose was euthanized because she was in such poor shape. Some of those foxes were rescued and sent to sanctuary spaces where they could live out the rest of their lives, but Rose did not get that opportunity. 